Hey everyone, it's Charlie here and in this video I'm super excited to show you CSA TV, Arturia's powerful cutting-edge polyphonic soft synth which carefully recreates the most famous Japanese keyboard of all time. In this walkthrough we'll focus on its unique features, powerful enhancements and unrivaled sound capabilities. Let's get into it! CSA TV4 is a faithful recreation of a synthesizer that defined countless genres, soundtracks and unforgettable moments in the history of electronic music and film scoring. Used by Vangelis, Kraftwerk, Stevie Wonder and many more, the original instrument was a central piece of equipment behind records that shaped modern music. Version 4 of Arturia CSA TV offers a completely rebuilt engine, combining unmatched analog authenticity with huge expressivity and modern features for a distinctly cinematic sound that responds to every touch. Now, before we'll explore its details, let's play a few sounds to get a taste of its potential. ATV's architecture is based on two independent synth lines with their own oscillators, filters, envelopes and LFOs, as well as touch response modules, which are responsible for velocity and aftertouch keyboard modulation. This means that at any time you can easily design two independent signals and timbres with synth lines 1 and 2, and then blend them with the dedicated mix lever or by attaching either keyboard velocity or aftertouch to the volume of these channels or their VCF cutoff controls. This preset showcases this principle nicely. When I play it, we hear the line 1 signal, and as we start to introduce aftertouch, we hear line 2 fading in according to aftertouch pressure, enriching the final sound. What's unique about this system is that because of the polyphonic aftertouch, we can introduce line 2 on particular keys with only line 1 playing on others, like in this case. As you can hear with the touch response section, it is easy to define how much velocity or aftertouch is applied to the brilliance, meaning VCF cutoff or volume of each channel thanks to the dedicated sliders, allowing for plenty of nuanced settings. It's also worth noting that both synth lines have two filters that flow in series. These are high-pass and low-pass 12 dB resonant filters with dedicated ADR envelopes plus initial level and attack level controls. Let's hear these in action now while playing these interesting sounds. <laughs> The best part is that you can quickly swap the line 1 and 2 signal flow and decide that now it will instead be line 1 which is introduced with the aftertouch. To do that, 
simply decrease the volume level fader of line 1, increase the volume level fader of line 2, and increase aftertouch and brill levels for line 1, introducing aftertouch modulation for line 1 volume and its VCF cutoff. And that's just the one way that CSATV shines and stands out from the analog polysynth crowd. Before we move on to explore more interesting features, let's take time to appreciate the polyphonic aftertouch working wonders on the expressiveness of the instrument by playing a few presets. The idea of synth lines 1 and 2 blending with keyboard modulation is taken further as we dive deeper into the main interface and its modulation and expressiveness capabilities. In the middle of the interface, we see a few interesting elements. These are the channel detune and panning, ring modulator, sub-oscillator, oscillator pitch controls and the touch response. First of all, with a sub-oscillator. We can easily introduce tremolo by activating VCA modulation. Vibrato by activating VCO modulation. Or simply a wah wah by introducing VCF modulation. What's interesting is that we also have the pan and detune module controlling the stereo image of both channels as well as applying detune to channel 2. The pan control is especially interesting, widening the sound by applying opposed stereo panning to both channels, resulting in interesting movements. This can be combined with the addition of detune to synth line 2 introducing interesting frequency movement into the stereo image. And finally, as we combine these two faders in action with the pan modulation coming from the sub-oscillator, we start to really hear how CSATV can shine with its lush and cinematic textures. The sound is not only widened by the opposing stereo panning applied to both channels, but the panning itself is now also put into motion by the sub-oscillator. What's also useful is that you can use the modulation wheel to modulate VCO, VCF, VCA and panning manually, like this. The best part, however, comes from the touch response combined with the sub-oscillator. This allows us to create a setting where the sub-oscillator modulation is activated by the aftertouch of our playing.
And since CSATV has a polyphonic aftertouch, this opens up a whole new horizon of expressive modulations. This also means that we can use polyphonic aftertouch expressiveness to not only modulate and blend in volumes or filters of both lines like we did before, but also activate the sub-oscillator modulation at the same time applying it to stereo image or both filters and VCOs. Let's now play the sound while introducing the touch response sub-oscillator aftertouch modulation to the panning of both channels. Sounds really cool. As the aftertouch is activated, we can hear one of the synth lines being introduced, but also the output signal of both synth lines is moving across the stereo image according to the rate of the sub-oscillator LFO. We can do the same trick, but this time apply the modulation to both filters cut off control. As well as for VCO modulation fader, which defines how much aftertouch increases the sub-oscillator VCO pitch modulation, all performed with the polyphonic aftertouch. All this really makes the CSATV4 a powerful tool for advanced and expressive playing. Another unique element of the CSATV signal flow is its ring modulator. Before we'll explain its character, let's play an interesting sound while going between the dry and ring modulated signal. As you could hear, the signal turns from rather mellow and chill to something more spooky and unsettling. The way the ring modulator impacts the signal is that it takes the output signal of both lines and feeds it into a sine wave and then mixes the resulting signal with the original. Let's play two more sounds while introducing the ring modulator to hear what types of timbres and tones it can produce. Interestingly, this module has its own dedicated envelope with the attack and decay settings, which set the fade in and fade out times from minimum to maximum modulation and vice versa, as set by the depth control, which defines the modulation amount of the AD towards the ring mod. Experimenting with it can produce some really special and unique tonal artifacts. One more element present on the main page is the tone selector. Its primary function is to allow the user to quickly enable iconic CSATV presets from the original instrument, but now it also allows the user to quickly initialize the sound for each line and also copy the state of the lines between them. And this is especially useful when designing independent timbres and tones for each line. We could start with a basic patch for both lines 
and then design a simple pad sound with rich harmonics coming from square and saw waveforms. Now we can go to the tone selector and copy the line 1 state to the line 2. Now we have the same sound for both lines. From here we can change the character of line 2 by activating its triangle and sine waveforms, making it more mellow and chill and we can even add a bit of noise as well as introduce unison and widen the sound with pen lever. Now, as previously, we can blend in line 2 with touch response, allowing aftertouch to bring the line 2 signal in and out, as we introduce it. This is just a simple and effective way to design various timbres and tones for both synth lines and then use these touch response and polyphonic aftertouch to blend and morph between them. Finally, the CSATV Advanced Panel opens up even more features and functions, allowing further modulation experimentation thanks to function generators, the modulation mixer and the keyboard modulation modules. It also provides a rich FX section with 3 effect slots, routing options and 16 effects in total. 3 function generators are the advanced modulators which offer adjustable modulation shapes and multiple destination sources per function. One interesting use would be to target an arpeggiator rate with a rhythmic custom shape such as this one. This will allow us to achieve a changing speed of arpeggiator as the function shapes makes its cycles, producing really interesting results. We could further use another function to target the detune parameter of the second channel. This means that the detuning will be automatically applied to the second synth line according to the shape whenever the function reaches its peaks and then come back to non-detune state as the function comes back to level zero. Finally, the Modulation Mixer module allows the creation of interactions of two modulation sources. This makes it easy to create advanced modulation shapes by defining the way the signal is mixed. The options include multiplication, differentiation, division, crossfading, lagging, summing or direct routing. Using this module, we could take the signals coming out of LFO1 and LFO2 and multiply them to create a unix shape such as this one. Note that these LFOs operate at different rates. One is synced to the tempo and one is running in hertz. And they also have different waveform shapes. All this makes their combination unique and will result in an interesting modulation when applied to a filter or another parameter available from the list. And that's really it. Hopefully you got a chance to hear how interesting the CSATV is, from its rich tonal capabilities through deep expressiveness and modulation nature. This instrument is really something else. Make sure to leave thumbs up and subscribe to Arturia's channel for more educational content in the future. Thank you guys for watching and see you soon.